Hi, this is Thicky Naidu from the Puerto Rican Cultural Center. I'm going to be quiet for a moment so you can hear the lovely coquilles singing in the background. Do you hear them? I just saw one. I just saw one. It's always a child's dream to be able to see a live coquille. And there was one just hopping right in front of me. Where am I? I am in Calle, Puerto Rico. Yes, Calle, the land of my ancestors. I'm so excited to be here. I spent the afternoon at Charco Azul, the beautiful blue water and bubbly waterfall. I put some pictures out on my photo album. <sighs> it was like a dream come true, my first day here, and to be able to go to Charco Azul, the land where my ancestors came from. So, what am I doing in Calle besides paying respect to my ancestors? I am here visiting with someone very special. She is an ethno-botanical author and educator, and her name is Maria Benedetti. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera so that you can see her. And so, Maria, tell us a little bit. Of, well, first introduce yourself more properly, and then go ahead and tell us a little bit about your work. Well, hi everyone. Bendiciones botanicas. <laughs> Botanical blessings to one and all. Um, I'm very happy to be here with my new friend, Tekina Airu. Um, and I have been working here in Puerto Rico since 1987. I came here for the first time um, to do a little research project on the herbal medicine tradition here in Puerto Rico. My mother was Puerto Rican, both her parents were from Mayagüez, and born in New York City, and I had never been to Puerto Rico in my life. I was studying um, at Hunter College, I was studying Puerto Rican studies, Puerto Rican folklore, Puerto Rican culture, I was taking Puerto Rican history. Um, I was learning all I could to prepare myself as a journalist, which is how I came. And um, my first project is um, this book. In English, it's Earth and Spirit. And in Spanish, it's Hasta los Baños te curan. And it's interviews, it's um, oral history, it's folklore. I went around, I had five weeks of vacation, and I took that time um, to happily journey around the island asking people about who would be the wisdom keepers of this tradition in their town and they would uh, indicate someone I would visit that person and it was a very challenging task even in the 80s because people had learned that that wisdom was not valuable that that wisdom was superstition or it was brujeria you know some kind of witchcraft um, people had learned that that was something that we were going to move away from and go into the modern age with new clinics and, um, you know, the white people, white coat, everything white medicine, white pills, everything was white. And that was better, right? So it was hard for people to value their knowledge enough to want to speak with me. Um, but I somehow managed in five weeks <laughs> to get uh, a beautiful body of work, which um, I cherish. I refer to it even now because it's got our classic remedies um, for everything from allergies to zits, <laughs> A to Z, you know. <laughs> um, and it was a very beautiful experience. I had no intention of ever moving to Puerto Rico when I came here for the first time. It was literally an exploration. Um, I was studying herbalism at the time with Susan Weed and with wild man Steve Brill in New York City. And I had been with Susan for 10 years in upstate New York. And I just wanted to learn about the herbal tradition. And what I realized while I was here for those five weeks was that there was nothing more important that I could do with my life than, um, you know, keep learning, keep studying, um, and deepening um, not only the knowledge, but also the consciousness about how important um, it was and is to preserve this knowledge. 
This is knowledge um, that has allowed us to survive for thousands and thousands of years. And on the African continent, here in Central America, um, in the Caribbean, and in Europe. So this is, has allowed us to come up to the days that we are living now. And um, we should all be very grateful. Well, that's great. And so she... <laughs> She actually treated me to this juice, and I'll tell you that I feel amazing. And so, you know, it's it's packed with all kinds of good stuff, and I'm going to have her tell you about what this juice is. In addition, we want to hear some about your about your current work. Tell us a little bit about your current work. Well, that's a batida, and it has um, a little guayaba juice, parcha, fresh parcha juice, has acai, has a little bit coconut yogurt, has some um, curcuma, which is turmeric, and it also has malagueta fruits. And malagueta is definitely the medicinal plant with most power for all Puerto Rican people. It's the plant that gives us our alcoholado, which is that liniment that we all know, even if we live in California, Connecticut, New York, Belgium, wherever we may live, we know about uh, el alcoholado de Malagueta. So I've been using the fruits, and um, they're, they're wonderful. They're antiviral, they're digestive, they're antidepressant. Um, it's our clove. Like, like a spice like clove and uh, it gives a little kick to the juice. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your current work. So um, what I have, I've just finished um, a rather large volume. It's called uh, Arboles Nuestros para la Supervivencia and it's about um, the trees that have allowed our ancestors to survive and our ancestors throughout the Caribbean, no? Um, there are 34 trees and palms that are native to our region and their medicinal uses, all of their uses, whether it be, um, you know, eating as, as food or nourishment or it be as a source of um, some kind of paint or color or it may be um, as a source of building material or furniture or musical instruments or perfume or insect repellent, or all these uses, fiber for making baskets, for making um, rugs, clothing. Um, this is a book that brings this um, information. It's a big one. <laughs> Arboles nuestros para la supervivencia. Um, it, it brings us um, a consciousness about how important trees have been for our ancestors. And we often think, you know, medicinal plants, those are those little herbs, you know, like uh, yerba buena, limoncillo. And this book, like, opens our eyes. Wow! Our ancestors lived with and from the trees. And this is a good way to explore that um, collaboration over so many, so many generations. That's beautiful. So... <clears throat> I have been enjoying, um, I walked through the um, Charco Azul forest with, um, with Maria and she pointed out so many wonderful medicinal plants. Um, I didn't even bother to write them down because I just wanted an introduction and to see, um, you know, what beautiful medicinal plants are just growing wild all around us. And so... Um, it was for me. It was a wonderful experience. So, Maria, do you have something that you would like to share with our viewers that you would like them to think about and to really, really embrace? Um, well, you know, I think the most important thing um, for me is to recognize that the problem that we have in our in our modern world, the problem, the ecological uh, challenges. Um, even the immigration uh, challenge, you know, it all has to do with making the other something like a thing, you know. Um, trees are things, uh, plants are things, other people are things. We can treat them like things if they're different. Um, and I had a really important lesson working on this book. Um, my scientific editor um, was explaining the birds and the bees, you know, of plants to me. And when I 
thought that I knew what pollinization was. He was like, that's not pollinization. Pollinization happens when the pollen produces an engorgement that actually penetrates the feminine tissues of the flower. And I was like, pollen produces an engorgement? Yeah, it's like a, it's like a long, long tissue that actually penetrates the female tissues. And I was like, I thought pollen was a thing. Not even pollen is a thing. And you know, when we take a handful of earth from the ground, in one handful of earth, there's more living beings with consciousness um, than there are people on this planet. In just one handful of living earth. And may we always remember that earth is something much more than a substrate to add chemicals to so that we can get a better... Um, let's say, a, you know, a better percentage of a yield or a production, you know. Earth is something so alive. Our planet is so alive. And that life is what have, has allowed us to live up to the 21st century. And I think that loving that life, respecting that life, and finding each one of us can find a way to show our respect for that life and maybe even teach that respect for life. Um, in our planet, in our waters, in our earth, in the air that we breathe, um, so that we may have a future, and our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren may have a future. That's my message. <laughs> That's beautiful. Well, thank you, Maria, for being here with me today. Um, it's been an amazing day, and as you know, I am running around the island this month to bring back new programs and new information to our cultural center and one of the things that I want to bring back is learn a little bit about these medicinal plants and healing traditions that our grandmothers knew all about and that we as a people have forgotten. Um, you know, where every time we have a little headache, we reach for a, uh, you know, a medicine from the cabinet. You know, we are feeding the pockets of, you know, pharmaceutical industries and really um, they don't heal us the way medicine plants can heal us. Um, and, you know, growing your own medicinal plants is um, the most healing of all. So I want to be learning a little bit about those traditions here in Puerto Rico and then bringing them back to you at our cultural center in a program in over the coming months. Um, so that way you can all um, learn from this and maybe remember those traditions that your grandmothers had as you were growing up in the, on the island. So, Tequina Iru, let's say goodbye one more time to Maria Benedetti. I'm in Calle. Hasta pronto. <laughs> okay, Tequina Iru from the Puerto Rican Cultural Center. I will be doing live streams throughout the month. All will be different, so just keep watching my page for all of the very interesting, fun, and exciting things that I'll be doing in Puerto Rico and bringing back to the center. Bye-bye. <laughs>